everyone welcome back to my channel today we are going to continue with the series that we've been doing here on my channel where I share with you lots of different tips and tricks and hacks on how to improve your coloring skills today in this video I wanted to show you just a few different ways how you can actually improve your coloring pages and just a few little things you can do to add a little bit of variety to your pages enhance your pages and add a little bit of something here and there and if we have time i am going to show you a few more little tips and tricks i kind of have up my sleeve that i wanted to be able to share with you so this video is going to be packed full of different things that you could bring to your coloring pages that is going to help you to improve your coloring skills. If you would like to see all of these ideas that I've put together for you for this video, please stick around and also make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up because that really helps my channel out a lot. If you check the description box down below, you will find a link for my Facebook group if you would like to join us there. You will also find a link for my email list as well as for my Patreon if you would like to support me there. And as always, everything that you see me use in this video will be linked down in the description box below as well. Let's go ahead and get into this video. We are back in this book, um, Romantic Country by Erie. And if you guys don't already have this book, Amazon is running a wonderful sale right now. I don't know if when this video is published, if the sale will still be going on. But if you purchase two coloring books, you will get the third coloring book for free. And this coloring book, and I believe the second tale, is actually part of that deal. So if you don't already have this coloring book, I'm going to continue with this series and keep using this page. Uh, to show all of my examples. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple things on this page, and then I'm going to bring in some other pages that I've colored to share with you some other ideas that you can use for your coloring pages. For this first tip or trick that I want to show you, it's actually going to be a couple different things in one because I am going to have to color something. So I'm going to have to color some leaves here to be able to show you exactly what I want what it is I want to show you and I'm going to show you a little trick that you can use to just create a little bit more depth when you're coloring depth and dimension and to do this I have to color in two of these leaves and so I have to color in some that are kind of overlapping one another so we are going to start and I'm just going to color in these two leaves right here really quickly. I just picked up some random colors out of my Prisma color set that I thought would go really well together and I kind of wanted to just make a bright happy leaf and I don't know if you saw my previous video where I shared some leaf combinations. If you haven't, I'll make sure that I link that one up in the upper right hand corner because I actually did a leaf demonstration very recently. But I've got Kelly Green. I think that's what that is. Yeah, so this one's Kelly Green. And then I have Light Green. And then you guys know what my all-time favorite highlight color is. It's this cream color. So, of course, I have to add that in there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to color these two leaves in. And let's go ahead and just lay down our darkest color first. And I'm just going to do this kind of quickly because I have lots to show you guys in this video and I'm thinking maybe I may be able to show you two of these tricks here with this one so I'm just kind of going over all of that area with the darker color and then I'm coming back with this lighter color and I'm just kind of blending it in. This was my light green. I love this color, it's so bright and happy. But I'm kind of going over all the colors. If you've watched some of my previous videos where I talk about blending colors together, I'm kind of going all the way over the other color 
so that I get a really nice blend between these two colors. And then I'm going to come back with my darker color, my Kelly Green, and I'm just going to darken up some of these areas here. And maybe a little bit up here and then I am going to come in with my cream and I'm just gonna kind of pull all that together and again I'm going over all of the colors so that they get nicely blended together so it's kind of just like a mix of all of the colors in one and then that highlight is most pronounced in the very center. These colors actually look really pretty together, so there you have it, another color combination <laughs> for leaves. It's so pretty. And I'm just kind of pulling this color through a little bit more so that I could show you another little trick. I'm always emphasizing in all my videos how it's so important to make sure you've got a very well highlighted area and the contrast between the two colors is significant so that the colors just really kind of uh, pop and create a whole different look. Like if I were to come through here and I were to cover all of this cream and go over it too much and then I'm like oh gosh, well, I feel like I covered too much of that highlighted area. I've had several people in my um, Facebook group or a few instances now where I've seen some of you come to the Facebook group and you show your coloring page where you have tried to follow some of my tutorials and you come back and you're like, well, I think that I just completely covered up my highlight area by mistake, so I have no highlights left. Well, what do you do? This is the fir first thing that I wanted to show you. This is gonna be two different tricks that I wanna show you from these leaves that I'm coloring. So what I would do in that instance is I would take my Mono Zero eraser. You guys know this is my absolute favorite eraser. And you just push this here and it releases the eraser. That is, pr well, that might be a little bit too much there we go. That's about all you really need, but this is great for getting in little, small, tiny areas. And it's especially great for this because if I'm looking at this and, oh my gosh, I accidentally came in here way too much and I just got a little carried away and I was coloring and I covered way too much of that cream, so enough of it doesn't show now. Well, what you would do is you would just take your eraser And I'm just basically taking up the top layer that I laid down and look how it just magically takes out that top layer. And if you notice what the eraser did is it actually, if I go over the entire thing, it actually is kind of bringing some of those colors together as well and just kind of taking up the first layer. Look at that difference in how the blended look or how or how they blended together now and how different they look. So blow the erasers off and if I wanted to I could even come back in the center and I can erase more from the center but if you look at it you can still see that cream and if I wanted to come back with my darker color now that I have fixed what I thought I messed up I can just come back and add more of this um, Kelly Green and create even more dimension to this leaf. And so now that cream is really going to stand out even more. If there is a big enough contrast between the colors, then it makes all the difference in the world. Then if I wanted to come back with my cream and I wanted to brighten it up just a little bit, I can come back and I can add some more of that.
And then if you want a variation in colors, you would just use a little bit of harder pressure and add more layers of cream in a certain area or whatever highlight color you're using in a certain area. And then kind of leave a little bit of a space where you've got less layers of that particular color. Or when you're creating that highlight, you can even, like I showed you previously, leave a little bit of the white of the paper. And then as it was coming through and your cream was coming through into the white of the paper, you would notice that you have an extra little reflection there. So let's go ahead and color in the other one so that I could show you the next little hack or trick or tip or whatever you want to call it that I have for you guys today. So notice I am with my darker color coming in here and making it a little bit darker in this area because this leaf is behind this leaf. And that was my entire purpose in coloring these two leaves because the other little tip or hack or whatever you want to call it that I want to show you, I needed two objects that were laying one on top of the other. And a lot of these leaves aren't laying one on top of the other, but I wanted to be able to stay on the same page and find something on this page that I could demonstrate with because I know a lot of you are following along and some of you are actually using this page. But if you want some really quick leaf practice and want to practice just some of your uh, different color combinations with leaves, this would be a really good page to do that because there's so many leaves. And I think there's quite a few pages in this book as well that will um, really be great for you to just practice your color combinations that you want to try. And like I've told you in previous videos, always, always, like over here, off to the side, I have my uh, sheet where I just test my different colors. And I always leave that laying off to the side so that I could always test my colors prior to bringing them to a coloring book. Now, as you can see on this, like I could continue and just keep laying more and more of this Kelly Green down. But if I sit here and I'm just looking at this and I don't think that it has enough depth, which I don't with just those three colors. And I've talked to you guys about grays and how to use grays for shadows and dimension. So, in a previous video that I did where I colored this here, I showed you how to add gray to just create a bit more of depth. And in this case, I did it on top of this jar here, but this jar is resting very closely next to the other jar. But it just, when I added the gray, this is gray in here on top of the teal. And when I added the gray, it really just kind of gave it all that much more three-dimensional look, kind of more so like it's popping off the page. And that mixed in with the highlight that I have over here on the opposite side where I would imagine the light is coming down onto this, really just made a dramatic change. If you've not seen that video, I'll make sure that that is linked in the upper right hand corner so you can go back and look and actually see it in real time, the difference it made here once it was, or once I came back and I added the gray there because it didn't look like this, but it was a real dramatic change. And when you use grays to do these sorts of things, it really adds to your coloring pages and it really helps to improve your coloring. But these are all little tricks and tips and everything that you can use that you could bring to your own coloring pages, even if you're not following along with me on this one. 
but the, the way that we would choose grays, let me just do a little bit of explaining. I did it in the previous video, but for those of you that didn't see that video, you could either check that up and check that one out from the link in the right hand corner. But I'm also going to just go ahead and explain it to you again, just for sake of this uh, tutorial. So you could see now that these two leaves are laying one on top of the other. So I'm looking at it and I'm saying, well, that's just not enough for me. There's not enough depth there. And there's not because there's just, I don't know, I look at it and I just think it still kind of looks really kind of flat. So I have some of my grays pulled out, but here are my Prismacolors. Now, if you know a little bit about color theory, you know that there are warm colors and cool colors. So green, like in our leaf, is a cool color. If you've got 150 set of Prismacolors, you know that you've got, like here we've got 50% warm gray, 70% warm gray, 90% warm gray. So we've got a bunch of warm grays and they're at all different percentages. And then we have our cool grays, which I have here. Now some of them are missing because I got some pulled out for different things that I've been doing. So. Then we go and we've got our 10% cool gray and then our 20% cool gray. So we have all these grays and some of us get our 150 set of Prisma colors and we're like, what do I do with all these grays? Like, why do I even have them? Of course, you can use them for certain things like coloring things that are going to be gray, like maybe some stones or some pavement that you want to make gray on a uh, page, on a coloring page. Your grays are not just for using them as gray though. Your grays have so many other uses and one of them is to use them as a color just to be able to add some more dramatic shadows to your coloring pages. And it is a fantastic trick, but you have to know how to do it. So if you are coloring something like in this instance where I used greens, Green is a cool color, and so I would choose from my cool grays because you want to put a cool gray over the green since the green is, of course, a cool color. So I'm going to come over to my Prisma color set, and I'm probably going to try. I, I would start maybe with, let's try our 50% cool gray, and then you can start with your 50% cool gray or you could start even lower if you've got enough gray to where you feel like it is creating enough of a shadow for you and creating the depth that you're looking for then that's fine but I would start lower and then I would work my way up so right here where this leaf is on top of this one and this one is laying behind I'm gonna come in here with my gray and I am just going to add this right over that green. And you can see how much that is just kind of darkening that up. But you really can't tell that it's gray, especially if I came back with my Kelly Green. And I went over that one more time. It's just really going to make it look like it should look where this leaf is actually behind the other one. So if I look at this and I'm just like, okay, well, I don't think that gray is dark enough and it's not giving me enough depth. I would just go from my 50% cool gray up to my 70% cool gray. And when you guys are doing this, this one has a pretty nice sharp lead, but when you guys are doing this and you just want your gray to be right at that tip where the two objects are meeting, you need to make sure that you definitely have a sharp tip on your pencil. So can you see how the difference now, how this one just really created that look of depth here that I was really going for? So look at how dramatically it just completely changed the look of these leaves and how they appear to the eye when you look at them. 
And if I wanted to, I can come back a little bit more and kind of add the brighter color in here just to kind of pull it through a little bit more. If you wanted to take your gray and just create a little bit more dimension on your leaves in some of the other areas or even texture, you can do that as well. And look at the difference in how this is just changing the way that my leaf looks. If I wanted to come down here and not necessarily just use it for creating this dimension where the leaf is laying behind the other one, I can actually use this gray and come in and go over what would be the vein of the leaf and make that a little bit more pronounced. And I can even come over here and darken all of this up. But do you see the difference that that makes when I just pick up the gray? Now notice I went and started with a lighter gray just to make sure that it was gonna do exactly what I wanted it to do. You want to start lighter and then you want to go into your darker color if it's not enough for you. So right here at the top of this leaf, I wanna make sure so that I have this contrast between the two and it continues to look as though this is kind of popping off the page and there's a little bit more of that three-dimensional look there. I want to make sure that I keep the lighter colors up here on the leaf that is actually laying over so that the darkness over here that I created with the gray is actually still going to stand out. So I would want to come over the gray just to make it a little bit more green by mixing those two colors together in the areas where I want it to look darker. But I'm gonna stay away from this area because we don't wanna take away from that. But if you just go back over all the areas where you added the gray, And then you can come back again and really even make this much more dramatic if you wanted to. I mean, you could sit there and you could experiment and play with it as much as you want, but that is just a little trick that you can do on your coloring pages. You can always keep your grays right there. And anytime you have anything where you just want to create a little bit more depth in it and make it look a little bit more three-dimensional, you can use that when you are trying to make objects look as though they are behind one another. Or you can use it like I did over here in the previous tutorial where I showed you how just to add depth using grays on the other side. Now, if you were using warm colors, like say this pot right here, this is kind of a terracotta looking color where it's got like reds and oranges and different things. This was another tutorial in a previous video as well. And you can also do the same thing here, but if you were doing it with warm colors, you would just go to your warm grays and use those. It was kind of two lessons in one. I showed you how to, what to do if you realize, oh my gosh, I got a little carried away and I need a little bit more highlight. I showed you how to just come back with your mono zero eraser and make how to just kind of erase some of the layers that you lay down so that you can make that highlight come back to life. So that is really cool. And then I showed you exactly how to use grays and you've got your examples. And if any of you try any of these little tricks that I'm showing you in these videos, please do come to my Facebook group and share them there with us. I know that some of you have done that and I love seeing what you're doing. Somebody even did it on a notebook page and drew out some pots, I believe, and showed me all the little techniques where she was practicing these things where I showed you how to do the pots in another previous video where I created a lot of texture onto them. Now we're moving on to the next little trick that I want to show you. I just want to show you how you can 
add little details to kind of improve your coloring pages. And this is a page that I did quite a while ago. This book is actually uh, Deborah Muller's A Mad Tea Party. This is one of my favorite books. I love, love, love this book. It's, I did this quite a while ago. It's probably been more than a year now. If you look at her hair, you could see that there are lots of little white dots that I just kind of sprinkled in here, distance, distancing them about the same ways apart from one another. And I just kind of added little white dots all through her hair. And it just kind of, when you look at it, it's, I don't know, like I just kind of, when I did her hair, I thought, oh, this looks kind of boring. I want to add a little bit of something to it. So I took my... Uniball Signo gel pen and I just created all of these dots and I love doing that I just think it makes a dramatic difference it just kind of really just makes the hair pop and it looks like the hair just kind of has this little decoration on it but I think that is really super cool I also did it on this page this one is actually Maui Mermaids and Island Whimsy Girls by Hannah Lynn and I loved doing this page. This is one of my absolute favorites. And if you look at this page, you will see, I don't know if you watched my last video where I told you guys cream is the absolute best highlight color. And I told you guys that I use it with almost everything. Like I put cream with everything. But here in her hair, I've actually got blues and teals. And the color that is highlighting her hair is actually cream. But then I still wasn't exactly happy with her hair and I wanted to add a little bit something more. And so I did it again and I just went in and I added the dots on her hair. And see now that I'm going back and I'm looking at this way like this is probably done like maybe two years ago. But I'm looking at it now and I'm seeing like little spots that I didn't do. So like this little piece up here I just must have kind of missed it and didn't realize it. So I just would come over here. Let's see if I could get my gel pen flowing. There we go. But look how cool that is. Do you see the difference that it just makes? I absolutely love it. So, and if you want to come up even further, But look how pretty that is. It just adds that little bit of detail that just completely changes the way that your coloring page looks. Another way that you could add really cool details with your gel pen is, I'm looking at this page here right now, and of course this page has been done for a very long time, but if you wanted to take your gel pen and you just wanted to add a little bit of reflection onto the page, like I'm looking at her little cup here. And let me zoom you in just a little bit more so you guys can see what I'm doing and the difference that it will make. So if I take my gel pen and I just put little dots in each one of these little scallops here, Do you see how it just adds a little bit of dimension? Oh, now it's running. There we go. Sometimes with the gel pens, you just have to give them a minute and they will start flowing. But this is my absolute favorite white gel pen. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same thing to these but this is the only gel pen that I have ever tried that once I lay it on my Prismacolors which are very waxy um, it, it tends to get flowing again even if it does get clogged I always have a way of getting it to start flowing again and then like up here where I have all these beads you can come in here and you can add more dimension to all of the beads. And I think these were done with gel pen, so we'll see if this, these were definitely done with gel pen. Oh, 
but see how the white gel pen just very smoothly and nicely goes right over that gold gel pen. And it's just adding a little bit more dimension to all my beads. But isn't that so cool? So even though you feel like you have finished a page, you can always pull out some of your pages that you did quite some time ago, like I am. I mean, this page is probably, I probably did this, my gosh, almost two years ago now. But you can pull out your old pages that you thought were finished and you can come back and have fun with them and just add in more detail. But look at the difference that made just by adding in the white gel pen. You could do so much with this white gel pen just by thinking about, okay, well, where do I want to add details? And coming back and just doing that. So now I have Joanna Basford's World of Flowers. And on this page, I have several different flowers that I've colored in that some of them were tutorials on my channel. Others were not. Others I was just kind of testing pencils and seeing how I like them on this paper. That's generally what I use this page for. I've got this pack of eight Posca pens. And I know some of you have seen me use my Posca pens in previous videos. I don't generally use the colors. Even you can see some of them are not even opened yet. I've opened a few of them. I've used a couple of the colors. But we're gonna try some of that today and see what we can do on our coloring pages. Now, if you look at this one down here, I think I did this one, if I'm remembering correctly, I think I did this one with Arteza pencils. And I don't really like the way my Arteza pencils work in this particular book on this particular paper. I always tell you guys, it's so important to match your colored pencils to the paper. So like when you get a set of colored pencils in the mail and it's a new new to you set of colored pencils, I encourage you to try those pencils in different books and not just one. Don't just color with those pencils in one book and then right away make the decision that you don't like those pencils or you don't care for them or you don't like the way that they perform because they may not perform very well on a certain book or a particular paper, but you may take them to another book or another type of paper and they may perform wonderfully. And that is what I found with a lot of my pencils. When I'm using Joanna's, um, Joanna's books, I like to use my Prismacolors and I love to use my Black Widows. Those are my two go-to pencils in this book. Oh, and my Spear Farben. I love how they lay down in this book too. I don't generally use my Polychromos because I don't really care how they, I mean, they're okay in this book, but I prefer those on a, on paper that is a little bit toothier. But we are going to look at this flower down here that I did with Arteza pencils. And we're going to see what we could do with the Posca. If you let me zoom you in just a little bit. Okay, so if you look at this flower and you could see it closely, you could see that I did add some other things in here and I did come back with a gel pen and I added a bunch of little white dots on the petals just because I didn't think that the Arteza pencils were creating enough dimension and depth and whatever, um, particularly on this paper in this book because I can do some amazing work in Maria Troll's books with my Arteza pencils. If you've not seen those videos, you can go back on my channel and you could search for those. But I generally use the Arteza pencils in those books because they perform so well. Now I've got a yellow Posca pen here. And if you 
notice I've got yellow on the leaves and so I wanted to just kind of see if I could add a little bit more something or other as far as detail to the leaves here so if I just come through here and I'm just kind of dotting it and look how pretty that looks oh wow that does look nice Sorry, I'm not talking because I'm trying to concentrate, but look at that little extra bit of detail did to those leaves. Can you see this leaf and then look at the ones next to it and look at the difference just by putting that tiny little or those tiny little yellow dots in only the highlight area. And I'm going to do it again and I'm going to add my yellow dots all in the other areas where I've got a highlighted area. Look how cool that is. Oh, what a difference. So see, and you guys thought it was all about the white Posca. <laughs> and look what I just did with yellow. I think I want to do the stem too. What do you guys think? Let's go ahead and come up here. Oh, that is so cool. I love it. Okay, so this is the pack of colored Posca and I purchased them on Amazon. I'll make sure that they are linked down in the description bar below for you. And they do come in different sizes, but I tend to really like this size because you can make a thicker ball of color or you can do a very tiny ball of color with these like you can see that I did here. So that's another way that you can just add a few little details to your coloring pages. And the other thing that you guys could use to add details to your coloring pages, I know you guys have seen this a million times on my channel, but for those of you that haven't seen my videos where I color flowers and know that I add glitter, I absolutely love my stickles. Okay, so these are my stickles, and they are absolutely fabulous just to add a little bit of dimension and a little extra something and some detail to your coloring pages. Those of you that have not seen my videos where I've colored flowers, you know that I always add stickles. I am obsessed with stickles. If you see my intro when you're first watching my videos, I even put in there my little picture of my stickles and I put a place where glitter makes everything just a little bit brighter because I really believe that it does. And when you look at your coloring pages, you want to be happy. You want them to bring you some kind of joy and some kind of happiness. And these actually do that for me. <laughs> So they are absolutely beautiful and when they go down on your pages, they look absolutely amazing. This flower here was a flower that I did in a previous uh, flower tutorial. I colored this with Black Widows. I absolutely love the way that it turned out, but if you look at this, you can see the bright blue glitter that just really changed the way that this flower looked. If you want to see that in real time, I'll make sure that I link that video up in the upper right hand corner so that you can go and check that one out. And then this flower here, this was actually done with Crayolas and you could see that I added glitter. Now some people when they use their stickles they get really carried away and they just want to fill the whole area with glitter, but if you do that you're actually covering up your colored pencil art so you don't want to do that you still want to be able to see the depth and the dimension from your colored pencils you don't want to use the glitter in a way to where it is going to absolutely cover everything up that you've worked so hard to accomplish this is another flower i did and this is probably one of my favorite ones like look at those leaves they are so beautiful. This color combination is just amazing. I love the highlights. I love everything about these leaves, but the flower, I used colors that you would not even imagine ever putting together. I used Black Widow pencils on this, 
And then I just came back and I kind of added detail with glitter. And this is a pretty popular um, video. This was actually a tutorial. And it is a video on my channel where I was really just trying to put the Black Widow pencils to the test to see what they can do. And it really turned out absolutely beautiful. I always have people all the time asking me how I lay the stickles down. I get messages all the time and I get questions in the Facebook group and I do have videos where I show you exactly how to lay the stickles down but just really quickly I'm going to show you exactly how they work. I will have a link in the description box down below for my favorite place to um, purchase stickles but let me go ahead and show you exactly how they lay down. I just squeeze it until I see the glitter coming to the tip, if you can see that. And I lay it down on my page. And when I start to see it come out, I just kind of drag that line. Now, don't do what I did there. If you are laying this down, um, always go from this direction to this direction. So from left to right. Go from left to right and start here and then come down this way. So this way you have room and you're not going to accidentally go over what you just did. Just like this. So you're just going to pull it up on each one but that is how I lay my stickles down and it's so easy and they're so fun to work with I'm not going to finish the whole flower, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys the difference it makes. So because I didn't do the whole flower, you could see the side that I actually added the glitter to and the side that I didn't add the glitter to. And then if I was really actually coloring this flower, I was going to finish it, I would probably put some glitter smack right here in the center too, just to kind of make the center pop out. And I would probably use my sunburst yellow. Let me go ahead and grab it and I'm going to do that because that will take just a second, but this is one of my favorite colors, this sunburst yellow. And so a lot of times I like to just come into the center and when I'm doing the center, I just kind of go in a circular motion as it's coming out rather than drawing a line. And so I just added a little bit of pop right in the center of my flower. So you can see the difference between when it was there and when it wasn't there. So this is the side where I've got the glitter. This is the side where I don't have the glitter. And you can see the difference and it makes the difference it makes to your flowers when you're coloring flowers. I do it on leaves, I do it on flowers. So I brought this page back because I just wanted to show you a little something else you can do with your stickles and I've got the turquoise here and I don't have any glitter on this page I really didn't do a whole lot of extra things to it aside from use gel pens or the white gel pen I guess and so usually when I'm doing people I will give them eyeshadow and instead of well here I just gave her eyeshadow but if I wanted to I can come back with my stickles and I can just really make what would be eyeshadow completely pop so all you do is come in with your stickles and I like to lay them down and just kind of pull them a little bit but I just pull it and kind of spread them around because I don't want it to be too thick 
And these stickles are really amazing because you can really get different degrees of thickness depending on the look that you're looking for. Like if I just pull it and I just kind of spread it like this, I'm kind of actually spreading the glitter around. Or I could come back and I can lay another layer down and I could get it to go down much thicker. But when I'm doing or making it into eyeshadow, I don't want the front of her eye to really be as pronounced. I like more of the glitter down on this end. But I love the way this one turned out. That one blended out really, really nicely. But if you ever lay your stickles down and you don't like the way that they look, you just take your finger and you take them right back off and then just wipe your finger off on something that you, or, you know, a piece of paper or whatever that you have laying off to the side. The last thing I wanted to talk about is how important it is to practice. So pages that are really cool for practice pages are pages like this that you would get in Joanna Bassford's World of Flowers. And as you can see, that's pretty much what I use this. I use this page for. I don't necessarily use it for just tutorials, but like I said earlier, I use it if I want to test out different pencils and how they work on this paper before I actually bring those pencils to do an actual page in this book. This is a great tester page. There are other tester pages in other books that you can use. This is another fantastic book, The Romantic Country. This page here is a perfect example of that in the uh, Romantic Country book, but you have a bunch of different buildings. If you wanted to practice buildings, you have a bunch of different sections that you could just use this page and you could practice all the different buildings. You could practice textures on wood on a building like this. You could practice textures also, but coloring a castle. And then over here on the other side, there is this set of buildings and then like this little tiny building here. Here is another page also in Erie's Romantic Tale coloring book. And this is a fantastic page if you wanted to practice maybe coloring some sweets. And of course it tells you what each one is, all the different sweets that you would probably find in what, a French bakery? But isn't that so cool? So a lot of these different books, here's another one. So here we have a bunch of different stamps and we've got different images on all the different stamps. And so this would be a great page to be able to practice too. Like down here on this stamp, you have a Christmas tree. If you wanted to practice just before Christmas, coloring a small image of a Christmas tree, you can always do that before you bring it to a coloring page. And I think a lot of these images that are on these stamps are somewhere within the book. I remember there being a page that had Christmas trees and I remember there being a page with a windmill. Another great idea is just to take your pages and make a copy of them. So like I could take this page right here and I could just scan it into my computer or put it in my um, printer if I've got a printer that copies and I can make a copy of the page and I can practice all of these flowers before I actually do it in the book. Another idea, what I like to do, is these coloring books are not very expensive at all. Like I think this one right now, maybe $9.99, sometimes it goes down to $8.99. I've seen it even cheaper. Right now, Amazon is doing a special that they do every couple months where if you purchase two coloring books, you get the third one free. Joanna Basford's coloring books are very often in those deals. So that is a great opportunity to just buy three copies of one coloring book or two copies of one coloring book and a copy of a new one that may be new to you. But these are just a few different ideas on how you can improve your coloring skills or add details to your coloring pages. I have lots more ideas, so I have more videos coming for this series, but if there's anything that you would like to see in this series, please let me know in the comments down below, and I will be sure to show you how to do whatever it is you are looking to do, or whatever it is, or answer your questions, and I will make sure that I will bring that to a video, either that or answer your questions. I always try to answer all the questions in the comments, so if you have questions for me, do leave those down in the comments because I always do come back and try my hardest to answer all of those. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to my channel and also turn your bell notifications on, and I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring! Bye!